Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some pretty big news coming out over here when it comes to PlayStation 5, when it comes to the brand new future strategy of what PlayStation's trying to go and push and offer. We also have the reminder and also the kind of, I guess, the first time I mentioned it on my channel, although like in proper, we'd mentioned it in passing though as well, and also on Twitch. But for the brand new God of War DLC, it's also coming out. Two and a few little things that fans are noticing. We have some big news when it comes to Sega. We also have the finals coming out. We have a lot of cool things. So we're going to go talk about this all throughout this video itself. So make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications. On. We have the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway, so subscribe for that. We also have the Twitter and Twitch room down below. If you guys want to follow to have bonus entries for the giveaway itself, or say hi and let's dive on into the video itself. So, very first and foremost, if you guys have missed, and I don't think I've actually had a chance to properly talk about it, don't forget that in these next upcoming few days, there is a brand new upcoming God of War Ragnarok free DLC. So, in case you guys did miss it, there is going to be a brand new pop off over here for December 12th. You know, funny enough, I actually kind of thought when I first saw this, it was actually coming up for like next year like basically like a whole year from now so uh it's kind of fun for me whenever i did realize that a few hours after the game show that it is actually coming out so i'm sure you guys have heard about this but just a reminder this is coming out very very soon on december 12th for a full-on free dlc for the game in general it's very nice to go and see so I've also been seeing some folks over here that have been kind of calling out on, like, you know, social media, on Reddit, etc., saying that there's a lot of similarities between Valhalla and the original games in the franchise, which are more than the Greek mythology before the 2018 reboot, where uh, basically had Kratos switch to the Norse mythology, too, as well. So it's very fun to go and see this old combination, if you guys have seen this, where it kind of maybe leads towards what they might be showing, expecting, or might be highlighting for the game itself, and a little bit of the DLC. Now, I always think kind of Kratos... It, this might be a hot take, but I always kind of thought he wasn't as cool in the 2018 remakes. Like, he had more of that dad vibe, don't get me wrong, which I do respect, and I do, like, I like it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there's, like, a good emotional connection with it, but I was kind of found in the prior games, he was a little bit more of a BA and was kind of doing more stuff. So I'm going to hope that he has just one of those big, cool DLCs where he's just going ham. No kid he has to watch over, nothing special going on, and he's just like, it's my time to shine and let my dad angriness out as of right now. So I'm going to go it's kind of cool cool stuff either way i'm just gonna remind you guys it's coming out soon kind of showing like a nice little cool highlight where a lot of folks are assuming or it's gonna be taking in the general sense so now we also have some other bigger thing too as well to highlight where we do have this brand new kind of push and marketing strategy for playstation so as you guys kind of missed it and we've talked about this on the channel before where basically when it comes to playstation they've been kind of focusing on chinese or asian style games genshin impact was a really big one where they had that somewhat i don't want to say pure exclusivity but they basically wanted to make sure it came on playstation then they have like a I don't believe they had a proper conscience. which was like, hey, like, we'll hear you out. We want to put Genshin on uh, PlayStation rather than, you know, like them spending money on it or whatever. They're just like, hey, yeah. We were we responded in the email like we'll, we'll talk yeah sure why not and because they did that they actually made a lot of money on Genshin Impact mainly because a lot of the weebs out there don't mind spending money on the microtransactions and everything else I think it's kind of a good vibe but right now Sony's trying to go push for even more with a 3D strategy RPG for PlayStation 5 as basically the text uh, these big tactical tests are starting up over here for Ark Knights and Ark Knights if you guys have never seen is also a pretty popular IP now if you guys don't know Genshin Impact came from Hong Kai Impact and kind of the same thing for Ark Knights like Ark Knights has its own individual mobile and other side uh, game too as well that's already been churning and making money so there already is an established player base and established group of folks who will probably move over to this game already and it's kind of seems like playstation sony's kind of big thing too is moving over to that the fact that they like these asian style countries they like these asian style games and they do make a lot of money like gotcha games and basically these big gambling games that get white foods and such do make a lot of money like i'm talking a lot of money like i'm talking a lot of a lot of money like i'm talking billions of dollars i'm talking like these are like some of the biggest games in the market think like a raid jetta legends or clash of clans like mobile can turn like mobile can make a lot of money so it kind of makes sense why playstation wants to push for us in the first place so the strategic open world rpg is following genshin's footsteps almost exactly with genshin impact a hankai impact a third studio hawaii verse manchester spin its gotcha playbook into a free-to-play rpg with a premium feel and now another chinese giant is seemingly trying to do the same Ark Knight's Enfield is the new strategic open world action RPG based on the tower defense hit of the same name and with a PS5 release now confirmed alongside with PC, it's following Genshin's impact, uh, impact basically to the T. And it kind of is what Sony wants to do and what they want to market towards in the future. They want to, well, have people spending money in microtransactions. And in theory, these kind of are 
somewhat live service games, I would say. Uh, they're not like full on live service like Fortnite, but they're kind of like almost in the Destiny style where they had like brand new DLC, they had brand new characters, they had brand new things from microtransactions over time. So at the end of the day, it's like kind of a big deal, but you know, not the biggest thing overall. So Organized Enfield was announced last year, but developer Hypergraph has been pretty quiet since, but now they've had a chance to go. And ever since the Game Year Awards, they had a big announcement that is coming to the PlayStation 5. So as these technical test signups are all not open to as well, no one even knows if Xbox is going to get this game. Game, or Xbox itself does have that kind of big push maybe on Blade, or a lot of folks are assuming that's an exclusive, but at the same exact opposite side, this seems like a game like this might actually make more money overall. Like something like Blade might get more maybe sales, but a free-to-play game with Gotcha, like I said, makes a lot of money. And I do think PlayStation's probably smarter. Like if you could push like these huge Asian markets, think China, Japan, Korea, uh, India, etc. You're like, yeah, that's just a huge market for the games themselves alone. And these can be pushed on phones and everything else. So it's not only just a PlayStation game at that point. So if they have like some sort of tie-in or partnership or can kind of milk the PlayStation community, pure business sense, it's kind of smart. Anyway, so you guys want to go and sign up for the technical test. It'll be on December 24th. Uh, if you guys want to creep on that as well, the PC only test will start on January 12th and run for an unannounced period of time, too. You can also pre register for the game itself. But like I said, this is kind of a big deal. Like, here's some of their uh, gameplay demos. I maybe do a quick little highlight for you guys. We kind of talk about the stuff with it. But like, it's just number one, I think the graphics are cool. I've always enjoyed like JRPG games, and I feel like this kind of seems a little bit more on the mature side in comparison to, let's say, Genshin. I thought Genshin had a really cool environment, but I feel like I like this a little bit more. And don't mind me, I don't mind the cat girls and such, but like, this seems like a game I don't want to play. Like, I feel like I'd actually enjoy this game, and it seems cool. I like the style, I like the characters, I like everything, and it does seem like a slightly more mature Genshin Impact, and I do think Genshin Impact itself is, well, a big, big game. I don't know. <laughs> at least at least in my mind. But it's also, I mean, what, what can you go wrong? Like, you got cat girls, you got anime girls, I'm cool with that. At least for me, you know, I'm a weirdo, whatever. But anyway, so the big idea for this is Sony wants to make this a big push. They won't have a chance to go and make money on these DLCs. Something like Destiny may not be making money. They might be in the middle of a corporate takeover and they're not realizing much money as they possibly can. Something like this, though, makes a little bit more sense because you can perpetually keep on adding more characters, more waifus, and having this live service vibe. And also, a lot of folks have always enjoyed games that are like JRPG type style games. And the like tactical style is also kind of a good thing for both mobile as well as also PC users. Turn based enough and kind of chill enough where someone wants to play on their iPad or iPhone. This can be also thrown into it or something to as well pc or ps5 and tie that in with uh you know like microtransactions like the people i do the gotcha now i do think this is smart and i kind of want to hear your takes on this down below because at the end of the day you just want to make money and certain things although i don't morally like things like mobile games gotcha games gambling games loot box games or whatever like i'm pretty kind of against it uh sometimes if the game is good i'll throw it a 50 you know like if it's like something i really like and i really enjoy or play a lot i'm slightly biased because i'm a twitch streamer and do youtube stuff so i can do a tax write-off or whatever or do it for content for like the stream but at the same exact time like you know people like it people spend a lot of money look at literally like all these types of games look at arc nights where this game's even kind of somewhat based on that makes a lot a lot of money so if they're making money why not keep pushing for it so it does kind of seem like playstation's trying to go and almost lock in these quote-unquote weebs and people who would enjoy this in the asian markets because these are games that do turn a lot of money and at the same time xbox has been kind of slow on the punch for it and they're not going to make as much money at the end of the day in regards to all of it so i'm intrigued i'm intrigued i want to see where they keep on going at the end of the day so all around cool stuff also i want to play the game too we also had the finals get a nice little press release in case you guys missed it, I also did enjoy this game. I thought this game was actually pretty sick. So the final nears over 200,000 concurrent players in just one day after launch, which I think is ridiculous. So this game was cool. I played one of the betas for it. I kind of want to maybe play some of it tonight, maybe on Twitch. It's just a cool game. Like, it's a fun game. It's not a game I'd probably want to play for months on end, but I play it for a nice little weekend. I'm cool with that. Some bigger Sega news is that basically they want to go and reboot a lot of these old school games. They want to have some edginess and rebellious mindset when it comes to Sega. And as they kind of chance to go and showcase like crazy tags, and Jet Set Radio. This is what I like to go and see. So they also did go and confirm that the original team behind the Jet Set Radio is for involved in this. It seems like Sega has a lot of plans for these old school games. It looks like all these, like, say, Golden Axe, Crazy Taxi, you know, Streets of Rage. And these are games I think a lot of folks like. They say we want to really show the edginess and rebellious mindset when discussing the tone of their recently announced revivals in the hopes of em emulating the original game's vibes. The concept of games like Jet Set Radio is advanced. The original creators are involved again, and it's time is 
now. It's a good time where people could appreciate all these different types of concepts and probably would appreciate this. Like, I'd play these old school Sega games myself. And as well, on top of this, too, like things like Yakuza or Sonic or Persona, they've been holding up, well, Sega. Those are cool games, but they want something more. Like, you can only keep on playing Call of Duty. You need other games, too, as well. So, I'm excited for this regardless. And the last but not least, it's kind of funny, Cyberpunk did have a chance to go and send out a message to No Man's Sky and congratulate them on the, both the brand new game and as well, the fact that they're fixing their game. So a lot of little random various stories all throughout today, so make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch room down below, and of course, the brand new giveaway as well. And I appreciate you guys all so much for watching here in the first place.